In this video, the searching of chemical names in registry and the subsequent display of information associated with these chemical names will be examined, as will the manipulation and refinement of the answer sets. After crossing into the CA Plus database, certain types of information about the compounds in the answer sets will be searched by looking for the presence of index terms or roles in the records associated, associated with the registry numbers. So let's start things off by getting into the registry database. And now I'm going to initiate my first compound search and the compound I will be searching for is Olaparib. Compound name. And I uh, get my answer back. Since it's just one answer here, I can just type in display. And this will show me the registry record. So this is all the information uh, in the registry about this compound. It's going to give me uh, the registry number, show me the structure. It will also associate not only a CA index chemical name, but um, we uh, take pride in our indexing, uh, our human curators uh, do, and uh, other names out there, chemical names out there associated with the structure will also be uh, put in place. Since this compound uh, is a uh, it's gone through the drug development process and is a marketed drug for B-cell cancers. Um, there's a very good chance that uh, additional names associated for its residence at a given company will also be present. And during the course of this compound's development, it started off at a company called Kudos Pharma, which was then acquired by AstraZeneca. So we can see uh, these names are present as well. Now I, I can uh, search, I could have searched for this record uh, by using these names as well. That's what the indexing does for you. But we uh, like to point out in such situations that when you are searching for a name like this that has letters followed by numbers, always remember to put the space in there. So if I tried to search for this one, um, AZD2281, and I did not put that space in there, it's not going to get an answer. So if I pull back that same record and make sure that space is present, there. Uh, we get the, uh, it, it finds the appropriate record. Uh, another thing I kind of like to sprinkle in here, because especially when you're looking up records like this, it's tough to remember, was it 2281, 2280, uh, what have you. There is something called the expand function. So if I type uh, expand AZD space 2281, What this is going to do is it's going to go out and it's going to look for closely associated names alphabetically um, related to this one. So here's the compound that we're searching. It will look for the two records uh, or the two chemical names preceding and the, and the nine following. So this can be very useful. Like I said, if you're maybe off by a, uh, a digit or so, this can help you uh, find what you're actually looking for. Uh, another way that I could uh, search for um, compounds uh, in this database uh, is the following. So if we, we look at this compound up here, it's got several different functional groups associated with it. It's got a thalazinone, it's got a piperazine, it's got a fluorophenyl group, cyclopropyl. Um, what we might be interested in doing and in seeing what other compounds have these functional groups in it, because maybe they are fairly closely related to this uh, and we, they might be of interest to us. So um, that is uh, something I can do, and rather than have you guys uh, watch me type this out, I'll bring it out, the search all ready to go, and then I can talk my way through it. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm stringing together four different functional groups that I'm looking for in molecules, and, uh, and I want to engage in the search to find uh, such molecules. So I'm, I'm looking for it to incorporate a thalazine, and I'm, I can use a wildcard here, so uh, different suffixes on there uh, will all be found. And then I'll link these all up by these sentence operators, the S in parentheses. So I'm looking for the thalazine, a cyclopropyl, piperazine, once again, using the wildcard here. And then the fourth component I want uh, in my molecules, uh, I want some uh, bandwidth here, and I'm, I'd be willing to have either a fluorobenzyl or a fluorophenyl. I don't want both, but I want to make sure uh, I don't miss anything. So I can link these two by the Boolean OR operator and put those in parentheses. All right, so let's see what we find when we search for this. It's going to go find all of these function groups independently and then find 
the uh, records where all four of those function groups appear in the molecule. So uh, in this case, I uh, maybe I'm interested in any random one. And there, if you want to look up uh, uh, something randomly, you can just say, uh, do the command D scan. And it'll go through those 115 and kind of pick one out of there. And so in this case, it, it found the oloprib, but here's a, a multi-component um, compound here where it's also associated with this, this ketone. So that might be of interest to me. And if I want to look at additional one, I can type how many additional records I want to look at. And I'll do the same thing again, do a D scan. And, and here we go, uh, kind of a, a different look here. Here's the, the base molecule. And now uh, it's got this um, long uh, substitution off of it. So uh, interesting the different things uh, that come back. So I've seen as many as I want to see with that. And now uh, that's how I, I get out of it. I can also uh, refine an answer set that I've created uh, using molecular formula. So let's say that answer set I created L4, and I find this is very, very useful that it, it, it'll basically, when you type that in, it'll tell you, hey, this is what L4 was. So you can say, yeah, that's that's the one I want, or ooh, boy, no, I don't want to search that. And then you can make sure you go back and grab the right one. But I'm going to associate that with a chemical formula, C24, H23, uh, FN403. And I'm going to refine that uh, by using uh, the uh, MF command here. And what this is going to do is it's going to search um, compounds that just have this molecular formula and not those that are associated with as hydrates or salts or, or what have you. So, and uh, it'll go out and um, bring those uh, compounds back. Um, but let's show you what happens if I, if I, if I didn't put that MF on there. So I'll, I'll go ahead now. I'll, I'll subtract that off and do a search. And you see it found 10 additional compounds in there. And I said the whole purpose was to avoid things that have salts or hydrates or, or what have you. So if we want to look at some of the things that it filtered out, I could uh, do a Boolean operation here, say search L6, not L5. So it finds those tens, and I can just say uh, display L7. Say, look at the first two. And so here, yeah, you know, here's here's you can uh, see uh, here is a uh, a trihydrate. So that's one thing that's getting filtered off. And then here's one where there's a two-component uh, uh, mixture here uh, with both the oloprib and, and this compound. So that's the type of things that the slash MF command will allow you uh, to filter out. I said I could search by chemical formulas. I could even filter by just individual elements if I want to. So if I want to search L4 and things that have one fluorine and things that have, let's say, four nitrogens. So uh, I found uh, 68 there, and I could uh, define it just by an exact number. I, I could also put in a range. So let's say if I pulled that back and, sorry, want to look at the range of four to six nitrogens, you know, pull back uh, another uh, 18 answers there. So that is uh, some of the different ways that you can refine none of those answer sets. All right, so I've uh, created a number of answer sets here. Now I'm going to cross uh, over into the CA plus database. So I'll do that by just typing via file CA plus. Now I'm over in uh, the CA plus database. Uh, now that I'm here, uh, my whole purpose was that I created a list of compounds that I'm interested in. And now I want to associate certain roles with these. So um, for example, in this first search, I'm interested in uh, the compounds that were pulled back in a certain answer set that uh, to see if they had uh, articles discussing pharmacological activity of them. And I would do that um, by associating a specific role. Uh, for those of you who, who maybe haven't done that extensively or haven't done it in a while and are trying to remember uh, what's involved in that, uh, the help roles command is very useful. So I can type that in. And if we scan up, it's going to show me all the roles that have been defined. So there will be certain master roles, which will have a four 
letter uh, abbreviation, and they are uh, overarching over a whole field of study, like in this case, analytical, biological, combinatorial, so on and so forth. And then uh, underneath uh, these super roles are specific roles, and they have a three-letter abbreviation. And uh, as I said, these are much more uh, specific. So if uh, you wanted to engage in this effort, um, you can use the help roles to go in here and find the appropriate uh, three-digit uh, or three-letter abbreviation. So uh, I told you that I was going to search uh, L4 for those things that uh, have pharmacological activity. And so uh, it pulled back uh, you know, this number uh, of answers. So let's go ahead and um, display bibliography and the hit structure uh, for the first two, let's say again. So uh, here's the information you get. Uh, the bibliography will give you uh, the bibliography of the article in which it was found. And so that the fact that this came back as hit means that the compound was found and the pharmacological activity of that compound was discussed. So um, uh, obviously very useful because it can refine down to exactly the type of information that you're looking for. Uh, in this case, I, I entered uh, just one uh, role. I could uh, enter more than one role. So let's say I want to search L4 and I'm interested in the preparation uh, of these and the um, therapeutic use. So uh, these articles will uh, discuss uh, both of those features for the hit structures in them. And once again, we'll just display this really quickly into bibliography hit structure. And we see, uh, once again, you know, here's the bibliography of the article, here's the compound that it hit on, and both the therapeutic use and preparation of this molecule are discussed. Um, hopefully this was uh, of use in, in feeling a little more comfort in uh, searching for chemical names in STM.